guys, we are back in JavaScript in our final section. Let's see, where is it? Here we are, building a cache register, objects too. So we're going to create a new object here called cache register with a total initialized to zero. So create the object called cache register. There should be a hint here. Oh, it just says, if you don't know by now, go back and look. So we want to create a function, cache register brackets, and uh, actually, uh, let's do it this way. Um, var cache register equals new function, or new object rather. And this new object has a total property. Actually, new object, and we'll say cache register dot total, and then cache register dot total equals equals zero and then cache register is totally equal equals 2.99 there you go so we created our cache register we gave it an initial total of zero and then we reset it with 2.99 alright use the add method to sum up the cost of the following four items let's see our add so we basically say our total plus item total alright so call the add method on our items so we're going to say cache register dot add and then we need to put in point nine zero point nine eight then we're gonna say cache register dot add and you could also do this in one method like doing a plus maybe we'll break it up here so plus four point nine nine and then we'll do cache register dot add. The only reason this pro might not work is if they wanted us to do it a certain way. So, but we should get the same total. Alright, so let's take this one out. Maybe they don't want us to do it like that. So, we have cache register dot add and we're going to add Oh, if we only call the method once, it'll only add the first item. So add the cost of how many times will you have to call the method? Okay, so apparently they say this won't add. So let's do. Actually, let's test. Let's experiment a little bit here. Um, let's try some brackets here. So and then we'll do plus 4.99. This should work. Oh my God, it doesn't work. All right. Uh, scratch everything I just said. We'll do it one more time. Um, I, in theory, it should work, though. That's what's throwing me off here. Um, but it, this could just be part of their their program where they want you to do it a certain way, and it doesn't work. So there's our 7.65. For whatever reason, it was giving us a longer decimal. Um, but uh, don't worry about that right now, I suppose. All right, um, write the add method which has a single parameter item cost and the item cost to the total. So insert add method here. So we're going to have guys, we are going to restart this um, section right here because I was stumbling on it. I didn't want to put up a 15 minute video of me just stumbling over a comma, but that's basically what was happening. So we're gonna, we have to add a function here and it's going to take in a parameter item cost. And what I was doing before was putting a semicolon here. And the issue with that is there's more functions. So the semicolon ends the, the additional functions. So that's why that was causing an error. And, um, you know, let's, let's just continue on. So we have this.total equals this.total plus item cost. 
And then from here, we want to add two case statements. One is for a magazine. And then we want to add the va the price of that, which is 4.99. And then we want to break it. We'll have one more case statement. Chocolate. And then this dot add. 0 0.45. And then we want to break it as well. And then we want to scan two eggs and three magazines. So we're going to call the scan function on eggs and then scan function on magazine. Oh, and scan function on eggs one more time. Save and submit the code. Have you scanned eggs twice? In magazine, oh, magazine three times. Okay. So. And. Have you scanned eggs twice in magazine three times? Yes. Scan two eggs and three magazines. Scan is not defined. Let's cut this out and see what's going on here. Your bill is zero. I believe we have to have this in here in quotes. Uh, huh. I'm generally stumped. So we're going to take this, copy, we're going to go out to an example here up a new page and we're gonna see what's going on here see if anyone oh shit okay I see what simple mistake uh, basically we needed to because this is a, a function that uses a uh, object it's an object function if you want to call it that. So we have to call it the dot scan. I forget that we're working with objects now. All right, so dot scan. You can't just call it because it needs an object to run to run it. Save and submit code. And there we go. Bill sixteen ninety three. A little bit of a brain fart. Uh, modify the scan method so, such that if we tell it the quantity of each item, it should be able to add the right amount. Since you currently tell scan nothing about quantity, it may be useful to create another parameter. That is true. Quant. Quant. It T. All right, making sure I'm spell nope, spelling it right. So, in this case, so we even cleaned up our, uh, our, our our scan function, so we're going to put times quantity. I like spacing this out. Uh, actually, we don't need this. And then times. And now scan each item four times. So. All right, so we're gonna need our cash register again. 
we're going to call the dot scan method and we'll just do it in order. First we have our eggs, that's our item parameter. Then we have our quantity four. Then we have our cash register again. Dot scan. And then we have milk. And we're gonna do that four times as well. And then cash register dot scan. And then we have our magazine. And that's four. And then we have our cash register.scan and that's our chocolate four and now we should be good to go bam and then we have a thirty dollar bill cool we need to keep track of how much the last transaction was modify the add method to keep track of the amount of the last transaction should be tracked in new property last transaction amount All right, so modify the add method. All right, so we want to mo modify the add method. Uh, and how do we want to do this? Okay. So first thing first, let's do what they tell us to do. Last transaction amount. They could have chosen a shorter name, you think? Add a method called void last transaction. All right. Add a method called void last transaction that subtracts the last amounts. All right. Why are we adding this? And we'll say this dot last transaction amount equals item cost and then from here we will add we need to avoid last transaction and this is going to take in the parameter uh, from last transaction Actually, this isn't going to take in any parameters. It's just going to do something. I believe. I believe. And in here, we're going to say total equals total. Excuse me. This dot total equals this dot total minus last transaction amount I don't think we did this right, but we'll find out in a second here. So we want to void the last transaction. So we want to just call void last transaction. And then we want to add, then add three instead. Add a method. We need a new method. So we're going to then call cash register dot scan and our last item was chocolate and we only want to do three so let's go ahead and see what error we get because we're gonna get an error uh, reference error void last transaction is not fine let's look at error code check the error message for more details void last transaction Modify the add method to keep track of the amount of the last transaction. So when we add an item, it's going to increase the total. It's then going to uh, 
Since we need this parameter, I just don't see how. See if we can do it like this, var. All right, so I'm a little confused. So just go to the Q&A form, see what's going on here, see some examples. We're on five of seven. So add function item cost. This dot last transaction equals item cost. Okay, yeah, so that makes sense. And then last transaction. All right, so we're going to say this dot last transaction amount equals item cost. From there, when they avoid the last transaction, we're going to say this dot total equals this dot total minus last transaction amount. That's, that should make that makes sense to me. Let's look at another example. This is the same thing we wrote, but let's compare it to make sure. So avoid last trans. And we have our function. I'm gonna say this dot total equals. Oh, oops. Dot last transaction. Double don't forget to add to your property add. Sorry, avoiding it. Oops. Dang it, I think we may have made the same mistake. Yes, we did. Okay, so uh, we're searching for stuff, for errors that aren't there. When the error that is, we have to remember that we're working with objects again and that we need to avoid the last transaction uh, with the cash register object. So, you know, create an object constructor like staff member which takes two parameters. All right, so we have our, oh, does it say what to name them? So we have Sally and Bob, so we'll have, how about Bill? Var Bill equals new staff member. This is how I prefer creating objects. It's just simpler to me. Um, so for the name, Create an object construct called staff member, which takes two parameters, name and discount percent. All right, so we'll just have name, comma, discount percent. We'll say. Let me show you how you get to employees. And we're gonna say we created an object construct a staff member which takes two parameters name discount percent okay and then have the public properties name and discount percent equal to 
So we'll say bill dot name. I don't know why this last one's throwing me off so much. Okay, there we go. So we're creating a new staff member. So var staff member is a function that has a discount. Okay, so we're not creating a new staff member, we're creating a variable. And this is gonna be equal to a function with the name parameter and the discount parameter or discount percent rather and in here we're gonna say that these are we're basically just gonna say this dot name equals name and this dot discount percent equals discount percent and then we are going to create a new instance of the object so we'll say um, uh, var me equals new staff member equals new staff member and we're going to set the name to uh, Dylan and we'll have a 20% discount Cool. We don't actually do anything with it. A lot of code here. On line 10, create a new object called me. So, var me and of the type staff member equals new staff member. And in here, we'll call him Dylan and a discount percent of 20. Create a new method called apply. create a new method called apply staff discount in the cash register object. All right, so in here we're going to add a new method apply staff discount and this is going to be a function that takes in employee All right, and should apply a staff member's discount percent. To the total. All right, so. Under the comma, apply your staff discount. So, to calculate percent discount, employee dot discount. All right, so we actually, I was thinking we might have to uh, alter the code completely, but all we have to do is this. So we can do it like uh, this dot total. Times employee dot discount divided by 100 your bill is 1718 oh discount percent Let's look at the example here. This dot total times employee dot discount percent divided by 100. Under the comment, apply your staff discount. 
Oh, we forgot to apply it here. So we'll say me dot. So that's object me dot apply. What is it? The name of it? Staff discount. Under the comment, apply your staff discount by passing the me object, call your new s supply discount and pass the object to me. So in here we need the cash register dot. But actually, so we're gonna say cash register. dot apply staff discount and we'll say me there is a problem with your syntax so let's cut this out and see if we get the same error here false cash register we call the apply staff discount for the me dot dot discount percent okay so let's take a look at an example real quick on seven to seven because I think that's right yes cash register apply staff discount dot uh, just me as we had it before. So bam bam. Apply staff discount. Just for the sake of uh, argument, let's put this where it needs to go. And I think I see where our area is right now. So um, what's going on here is, <coughs> excuse me, we need to apply it down here. Bam, there we go. Your bill is 344. Now, why is it saying, oops, try again, false? So we say discount percent is 20 divided by 100. So, employee discount percent is 20%. So let's see if how they declared their function. I'm going to stop on the down to our cash register. It's not all very good method. Plus staff discount function employee. What should our bill be? So we're buying one eggs, which is 0.98, plus one milk, which is 1.23, plus 15 for the three magazines, minus three cents. That's 14.21. And then we get a 20% discount, so we times that by 0.8. So it should be $11 and change. Or it should be like 14. So let's go ahead and take this out and see. So this is 17.18. So 17.18 times 0.8 equals 13. All right, so 1375 basically. Cash register to apply staff discount me. There's a problem with your syntax.
Hmm. Alright, so our section starting at seven. I'm going. All right. Scan function item comma quantity. Avoid last transaction. Apply staff discount. This dot total. I think we may have declared this wrong going off their version. There we go. So uh, don't use their discounted <laughs> course. It, because it was working. We were just getting the wrong input. And we finished JavaScript. Last little section stumbled upon, but hey, we did it. Uh, up next for JavaScript, I'm not actually going to jump straight into jQuery. Um, I know a lot of businesses are really interested in jQuery. If you can get good with this and JavaScript, you shouldn't have any problem finding a job. But what we're, what I'm going to do um, over the next couple days is do some APIs. So uh, there's quite a few APIs in JavaScript. Uh, Apache, I don't know how to use that. The YouTube one, though, uh, I've never heard of that. Rather, YouTube, uh, probably that'll be the first one we do. Um, SoundCloud's a good one. And uh, yeah, so there's what, there's like three APIs, four APIs in JavaScript alone. So next section we'll be doing the APIs. And if we look at, like, if you go to your profile, let's see, view my profile. Did some of, uh, where is it? They have a, uh, like, uh, your course thing, your, you're like, oh, what's, uh, what courses, what they recommend you take? View course overview. Uh, I can't find it right now. But uh, in the next videos, look forward to the YouTube APIs and the other APIs in JavaScript. And once we get through that, we'll probably start jQuery. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Sorry about the stumbling around here, but hey, that's just part of coding. Sometimes you got to work through it. And as always, anything constructive is always appreciated.